The answer is yes. The Tenet Sprint is as awesome as you think, and here it is. Watch this video all the way through to learn why I give it a nine out of 10. If you're a coach who does speed training, you like data and numbers, and you wanna take your coaching, programming, and training to the next level to get your athletes even better results, this could just be the piece of technology for you. I always say that there was good speed coaching before the 1080 Sprint, and there still is, but man, I could not imagine coaching without it. Simply, what is the 1080 Sprint? It is a piece of machinery that does resisted and assisted running anywhere from one to 30 kilograms. So it either holds the athlete back or helps them forwards during their sprinting. And it measures at 330 hertz or 330 times in one second, the time, speed, force, and power of that sprint. And then it spits out a super nice graph on the tablet of the athlete's run. Now, although there are other uses beyond just sprinting, sprinting is the main one, but you can do a bunch of stuff like deceleration training, agility and cutting, you can do broad jumps, single leg broad jumps, lateral jumps, and there's a bunch of other uses outside the main sprinting. Then just speaking on the resistance or assistance itself, it is super smooth, super high quality, and super repeatable. Down to the 10th of a kilogram, if you put 7.7 .7 kilograms of resistance on the machine, you know every single time you are going to get the same amount of resistance. It's super smooth, it's not jerky, and also just how the machine is set up the 100 yards or so of string is wound up on a spool, it's not gonna clump up on the floor, it's not gonna get all tangled and all messed up. So, it is super high quality, it stays out of the way, and it's super consistent and repeatable. The biggest game changer for me using the 1080 Sprint, apart from just the high quality resistance and assistance, is the graph that it spits out. So typically we just have velocity over distance. So every step or every mountain, as we say, is every step that the athlete takes. And why this is a game changer is because that is how the athlete runs. The numbers at the bottom are what the athlete runs, and that's what typical lasers and stuff like that spits out. But you can literally count the number of steps it takes. You can literally point and say, oh, it was your fourth step that messed you up. You could say, oh, on your first run, your first three steps were better, but on your second run, your last three steps were better. So the graph has been huge, and not only giving that super objective feedback of what they ran, was the speed better, was the force, was the power better, but you can say that literally was better. Your steps were more effective. The mountains were steeper and sharper. If you're a nerd like myself, all of the numbers and data that the 1080 collects during the actual runs themselves, you can go as in-depth as you want, and there's so many uses for it with things like JB Marin's Excel sheet using the one kilogram 30 yard sprint. Or you can do a load velocity profile simply just looking at the best five meter splits. So the web app where you can export the raw numbers, the raw data, you can do basically anything your mind can imagine with those things. With all my high school and college athletes, first day they are getting a load velocity profile. So I've written an article on this I'll put that down below, but it's basically four sprints at decreasing distances and increasing resistances to give them their profile that helps me then individualize and program their resisted speed training. So it tells me down to the 10th of a kilogram how much load I should put on the 1080 sprint for them to get a specific stimulus and consequent adaptation. Now onto the cons, there are two cons to the 1080 sprint. Number one is that it is a bottleneck. At the end of the day, it is just one machine with one string and one belt, so only one athlete can be using it at a time, which doesn't lend itself the best for larger groups of athletes. Now, there are workarounds for this, basically just doing complexes. So if we're doing a top speed day with assisted sprinting, one athlete will be doing an assisted sprint, one athlete will be doing a hurdle run or wicket run, and one athlete will be doing a timed flying 10 in the lasers, with the other athletes just kind of just walking around in between, taking plenty of rest in between. Or if it's an acceleration day, you can do a heavy acceleration, a med ball throw against the wall horizontally, and then a 10 yard sprint contrast. The second con is the price. Now I think that this is probably the biggest barrier and reason why more people do not have a 1080 sprint. Now there is context, I did not cut the check and pay for this. This is my boss, but reflecting back, he's super grateful that he did, my colleagues and I are super grateful that he did, and we could not imagine not having a 1080 Sprint 
that we have bought it. Now, on the flip side, I'm not gonna act like money grows on trees. I know it's expensive. I know that all facilities and teams don't have large budgets, but it's one of those things where if you do get your hands on it and you use it live and it becomes a part of what you do, 100% it justifies and pays for itself and that I do believe. This was just a general overview of the product. If you have any more specific questions, you wanna learn more, more about the actual programming and coaching and doing stuff with it, shoot me a message on Instagram or Twitter at Coach Big Toe. I'll put that right there. I've written articles, I have YouTube videos that I'll put in the description below of all the things you can do with the 1080 Sprint data and numbers as an example of some of the things you could do if you had one.